Hi. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Oh, God. Oh, my God. I, I only have seven minutes, so I got to tell this story very quickly. But one time I was in San Francisco, uh, and it was one of those like uh, school visits where four people knew who I was. It was like 2008. And like 850 people didn't know who I was, but the four people who did know who I was, uh, who I was were so excited, and they all had on like t handmade T-shirts, uh, Nerdfighter T-shirts, and but there were like 796 kids who were like, well, I guess I don't have to go to English class today, and <laughs> so I had to like win them over, and it's super hard to win over a crowd like that, and I was so scared, but they really liked me. They were laughing at everything I said. It was so enjoyable. Everything was going perfectly. And then I, uh, at the end of my incredibly like moving performance, I said, are there any questions? And like 800 hands shot up and I was like, I am a genius. And I pointed at someone and they said, Mr. Green, are you aware that your fly is down? And it wasn't just like, it wasn't down, it was like open. <laughs> it was like in all of my excitement and enthusiasm it had just gotten more and it was just a nightmare. And I walked out, and I always very subtly do this when I walk out. And this is the first time in my whole life since that day in San Francisco when I've been like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. So uh, I am a great fan of uh, like pop, pop fiction, popular uh, fiction, uh, or what's sometimes called genre fiction. Uh, I like fiction that people like. Um, I like writing it, and I like reading it, and I am a great defender of it. I like uh, romance novels, and I like uh, The Babysitter's Club, and I like series books. <laughs> Uh, and I like fantasy, and I like sci-fi, and I like mysteries, and wherever there are people saying, um, you know, those kinds of books are just read by uh, teenagers, and teenagers are stupid, or those kinds of books are just read by lonely old men, and lonely old men are pathetic, wherever those books are, those are the books for me. Um, <laughs> I try to look on Twitter to see what books people are really mad about, because I usually, I often like them. Um, I want to defend, I guess, today, uh, popular fiction, or what's often called escapist fiction, um, against the, uh, the criticism that, that, that there is something wrong with uh, escapism. So I am, I am stuck inside of this body. You likely have a similar problem. I have no way of confirming that you have the problem. But I, I am stuck inside of the, just this one body that I've had since I was a baby, and I, at least as far as I can tell, will always have until I'm dead, and then I won't have it anymore and I suspect that I will be nostalgic for it. Um, and, uh, but, but like, okay, so a weird thing about my body is that actually 90% of the cells in my body are not me. Uh, they are microbes. Um, yeah. <laughs> Woo! And another weird thing about this body that I'm stuck inside of is that it has a brain um, which I like process or identify as a mind um, that has thoughts, that like makes, makes thoughts all the time. Um, I am sometimes in control of these thoughts, but I am often not. And that is a very strange thing um, to say, the, the statement, I am not in control of my thoughts. Um, like there, uh, like uh, imagine a, a, a popular um, uh, pop song uh, called, I Can't Stop Thinking About You. Um, well, that's a very odd thing to say. Why? Why can't you stop thinking about something when you are the thinker of the thing? Like, like how is it that uh, I am not in control of this thing that I call mine um, when it comes to my thoughts, but I'm also not in control of this thing that I call mine when it comes to my body because my body can like fail and reject me in all kinds of ways. The more I think about what it means to be me, uh, the more I think that it kind of just means the thing that I, uh, that, that people associate with my prison, with like what I'm stuck inside of, you know? Um, and and I, I don't know about you, I, I have, so I also have this, uh, this is a little personal, I apologize, but I, I, it is Mental Health Awareness Day. I also have this uh, mental illness called Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. That was a weird thing to cheer for. Oh, I guess you're cheering for Mental Health Awareness Day, not for my personal <laughs> sickness. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I'm like, I don't like it. Um, 
Uh, but uh, so, and, and I have these obsessive thought spirals, which I, I, I think like most of us have, where we find it very difficult to like uh, stop focusing on, on, on one topic. So for instance, if I uh, walk away from my car and, and I start to think that it might not have been locked, um, uh, it becomes extremely difficult for me, progressively more difficult for me not to go back to the car and lock it, and then often I will then leave the car, and I will be like, but are we sure that we locked it? And then the, the, the use of the royal we uh, implying that inside of me there are these like warring forces that are both being identified as me, even though they kind of definitionally can't both be me at the same time. And I will go back and try to lock it again, and et cetera, for, until it is suitably locked. And like that seems crazy, I know, well, it technically is crazy, but like the reason it seems, the reason it seems crazy is because you are not stuck inside of the obsessive thought spiral, which you will do anything to end, even if it means having to lock your car 14 or 15 times, because the, the pleasure of having that obsessive thought spiral end or go away is worth whatever number of times it takes to do the thing, because you don't feel like you're in control of your thoughts. So this prison um, that I feel like I am inside of uh, all of the time, only having access to this one body, only having access to this one consciousness, only having access to a brain that is wired in my particular suboptimal way as opposed to the suboptimal ways that I'm sure all of your brains are wired. It is absolutely exhausting and infuriating and the more I let myself be stuck inside of it, the less I am able to acknowledge and celebrate the humanity of others, and the more those who are distant from me feel fundamentally other, the more the, 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 more the problems of people who may live far away or live in circumstances that are different from mine feel like they are quote unquote not my problems. Again, as if there is such a thing as me. So, fiction for me, stories for me are the only way out of that. They are the only way out of this prison that I am stuck inside of. I can live inside the lives of someone else for a while when I'm writing or when I'm reading or even when I'm listening to Night Vale. I can live inside different bodies and different consciousnesses, consciousnesses. not completely, I know, but at least in a little way, at least in a little way you can break out and that is the, this incredible gift. It is also, however, the last thing I wanna say, this incredible responsibility. Because we're, gonna, we're here to celebrate stories this weekend and it's awesome and it's so exciting and I don't know about you but I'm having so much fun. But, but um, the, thing that, the thing that we must be careful of is that of course, because stories have that power, that escapist power, uh, we have to be careful how we use them, right? Like with great power comes great responsibility. And stories can be used evilly. Stories can be used to make uh, others seem less human. Stories can be used to, um, to deny access um, or to deny power or to deny agency to others. And so um, as we continue through this wonderful day, I would say, um, I love stories because they let me out of this prison of myself and also that we have to be uh, careful and excited, both excited about stories but also careful to try uh, to tell good ones well. Thank you guys so much, you rule, bye.